It's been about a month now with the S22 Ultra and my opinion on it has changed. Let's talk about it. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video showcasing my experience with the S22 Ultra as someone who's been a lifelong iPhone user. There were some things that I mentioned that got some people a little upset. As I've been living with the phone now for nearly a month, I just wanted to readdress some of those things and talk about whether there's still a problem to me or not. In the video, I talked about my experience with Google Photos and the gallery app. And I just don't think that I explained myself nearly as well as I could have. <laughs> when I was coming from the iPhone, I used my Google account to back up all of my photos to Google Photos so that when I got the Samsung, I can just go on Google Photos and re-download all of them. I was kind of surprised to realize that there was no way to download everything from the Google Photos app in my library locally onto this phone. And I was kind of confused because at one point I remember this being possible when I was using the Z Fold 3 for a little bit. It's not that it was a big deal or that I really cared about it, it's just that some applications like Facebook only allow you to pull photos from either your camera or the gallery app. So if I wanted to upload a photo that I had in my Google Photos, which was on my iPhone previously, I had to go individually re-download the photos that I wanted, which just didn't really make a lot of sense to me. However, I ended up just downloading everything from my iCloud and moving them over through USB onto the phone. So it wasn't a big deal or life altering in any way. Actually, it's kind of simple being able to just move data on and off of this thing. It was just kind of an odd quirk that I had to figure out while owning this phone for only about a week. Another thing that seemed to shock people was my stance on the biometrics. And yes, a lame iPhone user like me was just unaware at the time how many options you actually get on this phone. I just truthfully didn't really understand the complexity and how all of these things can be changed. But the problem that I had with the biometrics isn't really something I feel like would impact a regular person in their day to day. I use pattern unlock and 2D face unlock. And yes, I know it's not as secure, but at work I don't really have the option to because I'm constantly wearing gloves. So using a fingerprint just isn't really as intuitive for me because I'd have to take my gloves off if I wanna just quickly check my phone. And that's why I use the pattern just in case the 2D face unlock can't read my face or I'm wearing a mask or something is just obstructing it. My problem with it though was that Samsung just requires you to use it for specific apps like banking. And I know it's way more secure and I know that I should just use it. And that's fine and I've learned to live with it, it's not a big deal. But it just was a weird thing to get used to coming from Face ID. And Face ID isn't perfect. There were lots of times that I had to disable attention on Face ID because it just couldn't read my face sometimes. For the most part, it was good, but there were just times where I had to use my passcode and it just got really annoying. My experience with the biometrics on this phone have honestly been really good. And I, I was just kind of confused as to where the comments were coming from because I made it clear in my point that I had nothing but a good experience with the 2D face unlock and using the pattern. It was just that for me specifically, using my fingerprint, it just wasn't that simple sometimes and that's okay. Another point that I made was about the pre-installed bloat or the duplicate applications like Samsung messages and Google messages. Now, this was something that I didn't really care about too much. It just was kind of confusing. However, I've seen a lot of comments from you guys telling me that Samsung messages is better or this version of Samsung is better. And that's cool to me. I'm not gonna sit here and complain that my phone is giving me options. It was just kind of shocking coming from a different experience and living with this in my day to day. It just felt a little overwhelming in the beginning, but that's okay because I got used to it and this phone is easily my favorite phone that I've ever used. You know, the one thing that I can really appreciate about Android is you get to choose. I love that everyone can make their phone their phone and to me, like that's not something that I can complain about because I can't say that about the iPhone and, and that's one of the things that made me wanna to switch to Android. I just felt like I've been using the same slab of aluminum for years and it kinda of got boring. There was a lot to understand and learn about this, but that's okay. I'm just glad that this thing, that's literally an extension of my life, is exactly how I want it to be and 
It's awesome. In short, the S22 Ultra is simply the best phone that I've ever used. I'm not an Android shill, I'm not an Apple shill, no matter how many of you guys wanna harp on me for my opinions. I literally do not even own an iPhone anymore. <laughs> I don't own anything Apple anymore, actually. I had a MacBook, I sold it. I had an iPad, I returned it. Like I had an Apple Watch that I sold after I got this thing. I, I am not even in the Apple ecosystem anymore. That's, I guess, a testament to how good this phone is that it made me change my mind completely. At the end of the day though, tech is tech. Tech moves and tech changes fast and I won't harp on you, I won't harp on anybody for the decision that they make for which phone they wanna carry in their pocket or which computer they wanna use or what tablet they're gonna watch Netflix on. That's why we have options. That's why people have preferences and it's okay to have them. I just, I love trying new things and being open-minded allowed me to go out of my way to try this phone and now it's my phone. It's the phone that I'm gonna be carrying for a very long time until Samsung makes something that I feel like is better than this, which could be next year or it could be when the new Exynos chip comes out that's supposed to rival Apple. I, I don't know. <laughs> so in summary, just understand that I'm not trying to invalidate you or your opinions and I don't want you guys invalidating mine because we're all in the same boat. We all have interests. We all have things that we like. Why does it matter what I prefer or what I nitpick on? versus what you prefer and what you nitpick on. You're watching this video because you like tech and I'm making this video because I like tech. So let's just agree to disagree sometimes. However, I'll come make a video like this and tell you that I'm wrong if I feel like I messed up. But for real though, just one quick thing aside, I just wanna say thank you guys so much for the support that you've been giving me. It's actually incredible. The Samsung video has like 20,000 views, which I can't even comprehend. The video that I made about like the PS5 and stuff has been doing so well. And it's just crazy to think that something I'm making is reaching as many people as it is. And thank you all for subscribing and liking the videos and showing your support because I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for you guys. Like if there was no one to watch, I'm not gonna bother making a video. And it's crazy that it's already starting to reach people. It, it's just, it's mind blowing, so thank you so much. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful in any way or at least are happy with my opinions changing, I don't know, leave a comment, support it by dropping a like, it would mean a lot. Thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you have a good one and peace out.